righteousness and faithfulness in the words of God, the defender of the faith, God himself. He alone is our defender because his word is truth, his word is life. We give God thanks again for the privilege and the opportunity for clarity and understanding of his word, which could be at times easily misunderstood by many of us. This week we're going into teaching of the book of Colossians. The life of Paul is an example of a transformation of one who only know the word, but transform in living the word and being used by God as a vessel. So they able to have a understanding of what the Holy Word is saying. So our lives will be blameless and pleasing unto the most high God. Again, faith, they able to stand on God's word, belief and know that everything else will fail, but God's word will stand forever. And as we go into the teachings of Colossians, I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance, our understanding and clarity, so we continue to mature and grow in the things of God. Be blessed. The letter to the Colossians. The letter was written by Paul during his first Roman imprisonment about AD 62, around about the same time as Ephesians and Philemon were written. These three letters with the possible inclusion of Philippians are known as the prison letters. By comparing Ephesians and Colossians, we can get better understanding of both letters, for Paul goes into greater detail in different areas in each letter. Paul ministered in the Asian city of Ephesus for almost three years during his missionary journeys, as we see in Acts. It was probably during this time that Epaphras came to Christ. Epaphras took the gospel east to Colossae, Laodicea and Hierapolis in the fertile Lycus Valley. Epaphras later visited Paul in prison. Colossians, Philemon and Ephesians were written at the same time and carried simultaneously to their destinations by Tychicus and the converted slave Winesimus. It was Epaphras' report when he visited Paul in prison that prompted Paul to write to the Colossians, a church he had never visited. The Colossian church was predominantly Gentile and were being influenced by false teaching that faith in Jesus alone was insufficient for salvation. The exact heresy can only be gauged by Paul's refutations in the letter. In the process of refuting the false teachings, Paul instructs the Colossians on a wide range of issues, from prayer to the details of practical living. While most scholars accept Philemon being written by Paul, there is less consensus about Colossians and Ephesians due to the different style of the letters. However, these letters were written to Asian destinations that used a different style of Greek and Paul adapted to these styles. Thus, Colossians in relating to specific problems in the Colossi church has a different style to Ephesians, which was written as a general homily. The church fathers consistently accepted Pauline authorship of Colossians. We therefore followed the traditional view as Paul being the author of Colossians. The structure of the book of Colossians. Overall, the book presents Christ as preeminent in all things, but broken down into four sections. In chapter 1, Christ supreme in the church. Chapter 2, Christ supreme in the universe. Chapter 3, Christ Supreme in the Home, and Chapter 4, Christ Supreme in the Community. After an initial greeting to the faithful believers in Colossae and recognising Brother Timothy with him, Paul goes on to give thanks and pray for the believers. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, 
and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Paul continues on to outline the areas where Christ is supreme in creation and redemption. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God, and your enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that you have been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I will fill up in my flesh what is lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. I want you to know how hard I am contenting for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and unity in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness See to it that no one takes you captive to hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sin and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, 
and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they've seen. They're puffed up with idle notions by their own spiritual mind. They've lost connection with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Since you die with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations, indeed, have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with his practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of his creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jews, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands, as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there's no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. In these verses, Paul gives us the practical teaching on sharing the gospel with unbelievers. 
Firstly, to allow the Holy Spirit to help us pray for unbelievers. Secondly, to allow God to open doors of opportunity. Third, ask God to help us to speak clearly. Fourth, share the gospel at any and every opportunity. And fifthly, that how we share is just as important as what we share. Paul then brings greetings and gives an update on his co-workers that the church would know and instructs them to have this letter read to the Laodicean church and to read the letter Paul has sent to the Laodiceans, thought to be the letter to Ephesians. Colossians Conclusion Paul makes clear in Colossians that we need nothing more than Jesus Christ for our redemption and salvation. Paul says in chapters 1 verses 21 to 24, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour, but now he's reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, if you are still alienated from God but want to be reconciled with him, then accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. To do that, pray this prayer with us. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and the life I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins and am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in the Bible that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now I confess Jesus as my Lord. With my heart I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Saviour and according to his word, right now I am saved. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer with us, then we thank God for your decision to join the kingdom of God. But this is just the first step. You need to strengthen yourself in the Lord. And to do that, you need to join a church that believes in the full gospel so that the other believers can help strengthen and edify you. You need to stay in the presence of God through prayer and also stay in his word so you can get that living word of God into your life and into your spirit. So we're taking these steps forward. Then we pray that you'll continue on this walk that you've started today and that you will come to know not only God and Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, but you will also know the abundant, triumphant life that you have in Christ Jesus, which is not at all the type of life that the world believes, but is an eternal, triumphal life. So we just give God thanks for you today. And again, we pray that you'll have a successful walk in the Lord and that you will be strong in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, we give God thanks, praise, and always glory, because he will never fail us. He never has been. But in all things, he has proven himself time after time that he's still God. And besides him, is none else. He alone is holy. He's the God of all powers and God of might. And although he sits on his heavenly throne, he looks down on us is saying yes I love you and I love you with an unconditional love in saying that is the love that's for us we are able to with the help of his Holy Spirit live our life purposeful fulfilling pleasing unto him as always God is desire that we prosper be in health even our soul prospers and yet even as believers we read the word but are we applying it to our lives daily we're reading the word even as applying it to our lives so that others also will have a hunger created in them to want to know the God that we serve for themselves and to experience his goodness and to every level that we are in God. It's always much more that he wants us to know. He wants us to know him, not of the things that he'll bless us with because the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof and everything is for a season and a time that he predestined for, for us to achieve and to enjoy in the natural but not so much to focus on the natural blessings but to be focused on the blesser who he is with all righteousness he's the god of faithfulness the god of all wisdom and yet he chooses those that we least expect to bring about glory and honor to his name in a teaching of the book of Colossians. Again, we learned about the life of Paul, who again encourages us as believers to let our faith arise in God's word, but most of all in God himself. And rising in the hunger and the thirst to want to know him, want to know our heavenly father, 
for who he is and to experience the love at a level that uh, no matter what we experience that the peace that surpasses all understanding is well able to sustain us and to give us victory in Christ Jesus and again Jesus is the only mediator between ourselves and God here again the body of Christ Jesus is the head and yet the desire for all of us especially the chosen vessels to fulfill their calling and the purpose but most of all for those that are hurting and that are searching and because God's words and many other afflictions of the righteous but he promised to deliver and he is a promise keeper and it's no matter the persecution because God's word told us persecution will come to those who stand for Christ but know that you're more than a conqueror through Christ who will give you the strength in spite of what goes on and God always had the final word God was with Paul but in the beginning of his ministry it was a transformation as we have learned has quickened and enlightened a lot of believers that the things that we go through in life is all about God and it's not about us and no matter even if we have failed many times God is a God of grace and it's only grace that will keep us and will always keep us especially during difficult times and God's word said I'm with you even in the midst of trouble I am there with you so be encouraged and know that whatever you do I'm well able to complete it the teachings of Colossians we learned that even not only believers for those because we all have sin and we are saved by grace so not a distinguished difference so we are all the same in God's eyesight and yet he has chosen vessels to speak for teachers word to his people about him so it will be drawn back to him and we thank God for his Holy Spirit is the one who is always available to minister to us because God's word is always life and truth and we thank God for using Paul many years ago but we give God praise honor and glory for using us to bring forth the gospel because it's all about the love God how for all of us in Jesus name amen continue to be encouraged knowing that all things work together for the good of those that love our God amen amen